Here in front of me is nearly $800 worth of Lego castle sets. We've got the forest hideout, the blacksmith shop, the Lion Knight's castle, and the brand new medieval town square. As somebody who's collected Lego Castle for over 35 years, I'm pumped that Lego has been providing these sets for us over the last couple of years. But of course, as somebody who has done some reviews on this and knows Lego Castle history, I thought it would be fun to try to think about how we could take these sets and integrate them just like the old Lego Castle sets from the 1980s and 1990s. So if you are curious on how they look next to one another, the scale, and how you might integrate the Medieval Town Square with the Lion Knight's Castle, you'll definitely want to check out this video, and I'll provide some recommendations for how you might be able to integrate it all together in your castle layout. The first thing we did was to just start placing the sets on our photography table. Here is the array of the Medieval Town Square and Lion Knight's Castle in their full glory. Close to 8,000 pieces, 30 minifigs, two horses, a cow, a lamb, and a goat. One thing that jumped out to me is that while these are similar in scale, note the Tudor sections of the Lion Knight's Castle are about the same height as the Medieval Town Square. The Medieval Town Square buildings are a bit more substantial. This highlights what is, I think, one of the few minor flaws of the Lion Knight's Castle, which is how cramped it truly is when you look at it. There's just no room to maneuver in the halls and the passageways. This is necessitated by the number of walls in the set, which ramps up the piece count. Think of it like the pet shop and the bookshop modulars, which each have two separate buildings. That requires more walls, and the result is smaller modular buildings. Here, the castle itself is a massive set, but it is a bit smushed. The Medieval Town Square, on the other hand, has the benefit of having two independent structures. Despite being five distinct establishments, the building themselves are rather substantive. The result is that the tavern is tall relative to the castle. Realistically, the tavern wouldn't be able to compete with such a massive castle in real life, but it is Lego after all. Does that mean we can reject the notion that you can combine the Medieval Town Square and the Lion Knight's Castle? Well, of course not. If you want to display them together, you can easily do so as long as you have a big enough table space. And that's one of the things that we started grappling with in this video is as we set everything out, it does take up quite a bit of space. Check out this little storyline that we came up with. We tossed in the forest hideout because we got one free with the Lion Knight's Castle back in 2022. The 30 minifigs make for a lively scene, although our table wasn't quite big enough to stretch everything out, so we closed up the buildings and then had some fun. You can see our story here as we move from the left to the right. We have the boy from the medieval town square buying cheese at the market as the shield painter is busy working and witnessing a crime. The tapestry maker is tired of the tax collector taking his money and is finally lashing out. The woodworker is also getting a front row view of the violence as she makes a brand new chair for the King's Hall over at the Lion Knight's Castle. But what's this? The shifty wolf pack member is opening the pen gate to let the town's one and only goat escape. Unfortunately, one of the town overseers who could prevent this crime is off to the Lion Knight's Castle to bring some hay for the stables as his cow pulls the cart and his lamb is in tow. Why he's being led by a wizard? I don't know. In the distance, some merry forestmen are improving their craft as an archer practices with his target, a musician works on his medieval heavy metal, and a couple is on their first date, which just so happens to be sparring with swords as a young child stands near a tree watching and critiquing their technique. A parade of black falcons is about to enter the Lion Knight's castle, as behind them is a vendor selling bread and ale. And as one of the Black Falcon men is about to faceplant, the Lion Knight himself greets them heartily on his horse, and a trumpeter heralds their arrival. The Queen is led out of the castle by her trusty security detail, just in case. She normally has two personal guards, but the second one is... napping by the moat. Unbelievable. With a large enough space, the possibilities for arranging all of these sets are limitless but I wanted to see how they would look if you arranged them kind of like a 1980s modular castle. A couple of years ago, we created a large castle made up of different classic castle sets, and the hinges on these modern sets make this theoretically feasible, but accomplishing it is a bit difficult because these sets aren't modular like those from the 1980s. Here's what it looks like with the Lionite's castle in the back and the medieval town square facing forward. Checking on the edges of the Lion Knight's castle, you don't have any obvious connection points to the town square. These buildings are meant to be ground level, but the Lion Knight's castle has a more elevated presence. 
Perhaps the only direct combination that makes sense is the guard tower from the tavern on one edge of the Lion Knight's castle, as this is the one part of the town square that is comprised mainly of a castle wall. Now to do this, you'd have to remove this green plate here and customize the base a little bit to include one of the bricks that the clip can latch on to. But that would only work with the shield painting shop side of this building. The tavern itself has limited stone at its base and doesn't fit well on the side of a castle wall. One possibility would be to add a section of wall like they do in the Guarded Inn from 1986, which might be a possible approach for LEGO to take if they want to release a follow-up to the Lion Knight's Castle sometime in 2025. Just saying, LEGO, you can go ahead and do that. Integrating the wood shop, cheese factory, and tapestry shop with the Lion Knight's Castle would require significantly more modifications. The most likely scenario, though, would be similar to what I just mentioned above, adding a wall section like the Guarded Inn had. But one additional complication arises. No one section of this building is standalone, so you might need to close off all the backs and the sides. For the woodworking shop, that is pretty doable. But as I mentioned in my review of the Medieval Town Square, it would be a bit more piece intensive to do this to the other sections. Still, because the woodworking shop is stone, you might have a more natural extension to the Lion Knight's Castle with this building. One of the cool things about 2022 is that LEGO provided this gift with purchase in June and August of that year, the Forest Hideout. Now, this set faithfully recreates a 1988 set called The Forestman's Hideout, and I really like how they did this. However, there's one small flaw if you're trying to connect this with the medieval town square. One criticism of The Forest Hideout was that, despite being a very faithful remake of the original set, the tree is black. Now, the small tree from the medieval town square is reddish-brown and significantly smaller. While I don't have a huge issue with the size differential, the different color strikes me as a bit odd. And even though there is a tree on the side of the guard tower, it is also brown. But the large tree on the Lionite's castle is black. Thus, if the different colors bother you at all, go ahead and place the forest hideout near the Lionite's castle tree. Now, one thing I was surprised with was just how big the medieval town square is relative to a what's supposed to be a massive castle. But what surprised me even more was just how big the blacksmith shop is. Check out just how much it towers over the Medieval Town Square buildings and how it nearly matches the Lion Knight's castle in height. Obviously, this is an incredible set and one of my rare 10 out of 10s, but at 26 studs, its width surpasses that of the Lion Knight's castle main tower. This is a significant scale issue. Next to the Medieval Town Square, you can see the same problem. It's almost twice as wide as the woodshop cheese factory and tapestry shop about the size of nearly three complete buildings. It's not as bad next to the tavern, which opens up more fully than the other building cluster. The fun solution would be to customize your own medieval building like this one, but that would be expensive to buy or require a pretty sizable existing Lego collection. All told, these sets are a lot of fun to pull off the shelf and display on your table. And of course, there are tons of possibilities that you have to do that if your table is large enough, but keep in mind, you'll need a rather substantial table. And of course, there are some issues in terms of scale, which means that if you want to really make these sets align together like the old 1980 sets, you'll probably have to add some money to the equation. Of course, if you were able to save up $800 to buy all of these sets, you might be able to save up some more money to customize and modify your layout. But for some of you, that might be a little bit of an issue. What is our approach? Well, we like to have these out on display, but space is a little bit of a limitation for us. That said, we'd love to be able to combine these into one big display, kind of like the 1980s sets, but doing that would require a lot of views on this video. So make sure you smash that like button, check out this video from our YouTube channel here, and always remember to keep building together.